If you're like me and you don't feel like spending the money on an infrared camera, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can also find me right here at Flurn five days a week making photos and episodes and all kinds of videos to help you get better at Photoshop and photography and life. And today we're doing something really cool. We're doing a uh, infrared photo and they actually have infrared cameras. Uh, they're digital cameras that you can order online. Um, we're going to link to that below where if you just want to order one, you can get that. Um, people doing infrared photography and kind of like retrofitting cameras and things like that. But I'm just going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. Um, the results are pretty good. I played around with this for quite some time, meaning like mm, eight minutes, um, <laughs> which is eight minutes in air in time is like an hour and a half in regular Photoshop person's time. I'll just let you know that. Um, I, the results are pretty decent. Um, getting like exactly infrared photography images uh, just in Photoshop is gonna be hard, but I'm gonna show you guys how to get something pretty close to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's episode is brought to you by Ollie, by the way, who suggested that we do this. Okay, so here's an actual infrared image. If you guys haven't seen this and you're like, what is he talking about? Um, this is what an actual uh, image is that was taken from an infrared camera. Um, greens in the trees uh, tend to be very bright. Well, it, it's black and white. So, you know, white, greens, things like that. The clouds are very dark, really bright, vivid uh, clouds. Sorry, the, the sky is dark with a bright cloud. So very cool images. And uh, we're gonna show you how to do this with just a normal photo. And I took this photo on Hilton, or sorry, Bald Head Island. In North Carolina and we have you know basically the same elements a sky and uh, a tree so the first thing we need to do is turn the image black and white so I'm gonna go to my adjustment layer and we're gonna go down here to a black and white adjustment layer there we go now there are a couple sliders and this is really great because you can actually pick and choose like what you want your light levels to be so this is gonna give us a good place to start off with there's some presets here and I would actually recommend going through your presets um, blue filter high contrast blue filter, high contrast red filter. Um, that's probably gonna give you, there's even an infrared filter, um, which I just don't know. I, I don't agree with what that's given me, but um, <laughs> we'll just say, okay, that's infrared. We want a dark sky and we want a light tree. So the trees here, that's gonna be some green. So we're gonna bring the greens up. Um, there may be, the cyan is in the sky, so we're gonna bring that the, down. The blues are in the sky as well, so we're gonna bring that down. Probably not much magentas in here. Yellow, there's probably gonna be some of that in the tree. There we go, make that nice and bright. And some of the red is gonna be in the bark, so we're gonna bring that down. Okay, so that's a decent start to getting our image to look more of the infrared. Now, it's not perfect, but it's it's okay. Next thing I wanna do, um, I actually wanna select out each one of the colors. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and select out the blues from the background and select out the greens and things like that, and then I can color those differently. So to do that, I'm gonna need to make the black and white layer invisible, because if we need to select a color range, you can't do that when a black and white layer is visible. So you can't really see, like the blue's not incredibly vivid here, but it's okay because you can still select it. So we're gonna click on our black brown layer. I'm gonna go to select and then down to color range, and I'm gonna use my eyedropper and just select all the sky. Now, when you have a color range selected, it's anything that's light colored is gonna get selected, the dark colors are not. So um, I'm gonna bring my fuzziness up. This is just gonna allow it to select more and more and more. And it's gonna select closer into my blue range. There we go, and we're gonna hit okay. And now the blues are selected. So we have our black and white image already with the black and white layer. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of that, and then I'm just gonna grab my gradient tool. Um, you'll also notice right here, the sky's a definite, like usually you have gradients with the sky. It starts off pretty dark and it always gets lighter by, down the horizon. And that's just how like the earth curves around. Um, the earth is round, by the way. <laughs> the earth, earth curves around, and as it gets closer to the horizon, you actually see more atmosphere because you're seeing it stacked in a different way, and then you, you actually see like more water particles in the air. So that's why it always gets lighter near the horizon. So if you're doing a composite, for instance, and you want to make it look more realistic, always have your sky lighter near the horizon. It's always going to look a little bit better because that's how light works. There we go. So we're going to do a gradient from the top down. So let's just go ahead and back to our other image. And uh, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna hit G for my gradient tool. We're gonna choose the linear gradient and we're gonna paint black down here. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and that's gonna make sure it's not going you know, side to side. It'll be straight up and down, shift. And I'm gonna click from the top all the way down and end right about there. There we go. And if we want even more than that, which I kind of do, there we go. You can get even more and that's gonna give you a slightly darker sky. Um, well, that was, that's a little bit too dark. Let me just redo my gradient here. Maybe start a little higher. There we go. That looks a bit more natural. It wasn't so 
um, selected down there. So it's pretty cool. Using just our selection of those blues, now we were able to darken that area up and uh, we're starting to get the effect even stronger now. If you wanna go ahead and make it even brighter, what I would recommend doing is go back to your background layer again and we're gonna select out the greens. So we'll go up to select, we'll go to color range, there we go, and this time we'll select out the greens. And what you're looking for is anything, again, that's gonna turn lighter in color, that's what's gonna get selected. So we're selecting out our greens, and I'm not gonna have it select everything. I want it to, I'm gonna be a little bit more picky with this, because if you select too much, um, it's just gonna look like, um, it's gonna look like a big blanket of white, and I'd rather, I'd rather have a little bit more detail. So I'm trying to choose an area that's going to select the green, but I don't necessarily wanna select the tree trunks. Um, so I'm gonna leave those dark. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Make that a selection. And now it's, working in black and white guys is really easy <laughs> because there's no colors. Um, I'm not saying it's easy to make a good black and white image and I'm not trying to take away anything from black and white photographers who make amazing work. Uh, Sally Mann, who is, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we have a couple of her prints behind us. Um, she's an amazing photographer and she works in black and white and her images blow me away. So I'm not saying it's easy in black and white, but in Photoshop, if you don't have to worry about color, takes a lot out of the equation. Okay, so we're, we've got our selection up there. We're gonna make a new layer, and uh, I'm gonna hit Command Delete, which is gonna fill with my white color. There we go. And now we have the lights selected. And I'm gonna bring the opacity on that down a little bit. Also, we're getting a little bit of like weird areas, and um, it's because the, the tree trunks and things like that are not, um, there we go. I don't really want those to be lightened. So what I'm gonna do in here is just go in with layer mask. And um, again, this is like how much time you wanna spend on this um, is, going to, is going to dictate how, you know, how good your end result looks. Like a lot of things in life. There are very few things that when done quickly and sloppily still turn out good, except for Sloppy Joes, because that's kind of the imper whole purpose of Sloppy Joes is to be quick and sloppy. So if you are a professional sloppy joe maker, um, ignore all my advice. Just keep doing your thing, because you're awesome. And how you figured out to make sloppy joes professionally is also beyond me, but I'm proud of you. There we go. So I'm layer masking out like the branches, and you can see the um, in the original photograph, uh, the branches stay relatively dark while the tree limbs stay light. All right, this is looking good. great. Now, one thing we are gonna get here is a little bit of this. You see how it's kind of like creeping around the edges here um, where this area is uh, like, you're, you're, we're just getting a little bit of like weird edges going on basically. Um, and that is because at the very edge of these, um, there's a slight color shift, which is causing, there we go. You can see that's what causing our edges to look a little bit weird like that. Um, if you do wanna take care of those edges, what I would recommend doing again is going to select and then we'll go down to color range. Go ahead and select your background color range. There we go and hit okay. And then what we wanna do is, let's see, where is it that's doing this? Um, so we selected the color. I've gotta use my brain a little bit right now. That hurts. <laughs> All right, um, let's just make a new layer. And then I think I can do this automated Mm, this is hard. All right, I'm gonna fill it with a light color. There we go. And so I filled my selection with a lighter color. And now I'm gonna hit select and I'm gonna go to modify and I'm gonna hit contract by like two pixels and hit okay and then hit delete. There we go. And that basically I filled the entire selection with white and then I contracted it slightly and then hit delete. So we just should have a border. If I move it around, you'll see, see like there's a border of light everywhere now. There we go. And that border of light should counteract my border of dark, especially if we just lower the opacity, it should help blend in. There we go. And make everything look a lot more natural and good and uh, more like an infrared image. The last thing I wanna do just for like stylization, all this, um, you know, the grass and things like that on the bottom there, I think they could be made to be a little bit darker. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm gonna make a layer mask, or sorry, a curves adjustment layer. We'll just make that a little bit darker. And then on a layer mask here, I'm gonna invert that and uh, just go in here with my white paintbrush and paint this a little bit darker. And that'll help just kind of like draw a little bit of attention away from this area, more towards the tree on the top of the image. And it will also help to add a little bit of depth to the images as a whole. So I'll show you guys the before and the after with that. I'm actually gonna make the tree trunk a little bit darker too. All right, and 
clean up my layer mask just a little bit. Perfect. So there's the before and the after with that. Just making it a little bit darker is going to help separate out the foreground and the background. So there's our false infrared image and uh, it's pretty good for Photoshop not having done any real infrared imagery um, just purely with Photoshop. So here's the before and the after. Hold the alter option and click on that eyeball. There's the before and the after with that. And um, yeah, I don't know. I would not recommend doing this with people though. Infrared photographer with people just looks really weird, but with landscapes, it does look cool. So if you guys can use the same technique on some of your landscape images, I'd love to see them. Leave them in a comment box below. And if you guys have any other questions, let us know. Guys, we're on Pinterest now. We're gonna link to that below. You should pin us everywhere. It's flurn.com slash, no, pinterest.com slash flurn. Everyone's like, no, that's not what it is. Pinterest.com slash flurn. And uh, you can follow us and repin and uh, let us know what you guys are doing. We're going to pin your stuff as well. Thanks so much for watching the flurns. Flurn you later. I'm like the Michael Jordan of photography. Uh. <laughs>